plug in two of those numbers and let's find what their common number is. Where's your question? Uh, I was going to ask you if I could do this one. The second one on the back. Oh, no. Oh, no. So, yeah, you can use space. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, if you need more space, you can use up two blocks on your blue paper. That's fine. We're just going to have one more day of warm ups on the blue paper. So, you're good to go. So, what did we get? You just type it in GCD, the letters. Okay, and then 5, comma, 20. What do we get? So five is our greatest common factor. Oh. See, the calculator will do miracles, right? So Zoe, what is five x squared divided by five? Pretty good, one. One what? Well, we, x. Yeah, say it loud. What is it? One x squared, good. Keep going. Negative 20x divided by 5. Say it once again. Matthew. <laughs> Enough. You can't put x. That's what you're doing. Okay. You can't when you're dividing. You can't put a variable there. It's not gonna. It's, does it give you an error? Did it say syntax error? Yeah. It can't do that. You have to just do the numbers. So what is negative twenty divided by five? No. Negative four. And so we're just gonna bring on that x, right? We're just gonna tack it back on. So what's negative sixty divided by five? Negative twelve. See, that calculator would do a lot of the work for you, okay? Adriana, what is our next step, baby? Um, Wait, uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, yeah, yeah. You were right the first time. Come back out. Multiply eight times eight. Okay, so Adriana, what is my A value? <clears throat> okay, and no, once you... Factor out that greatest common factor, you're looking at this trinomial right there, okay? Okay, mm. What did we say about A, B, and C? Do they ever have variables? Okay, so Adriana, what is num what is uh, A? Where did you get negative 12 from? Is that what value is that? Good. Zoom. Enough. Okay. Good. Noah, what is my next step? Stop now. <laughs> Stop. Um, you can find uh, you have to find A by C. We did that already, so what's our next step? Okay, you gotta find you gotta find the factor of the the sum of Okay, so what are our factors? I got positive two and negative six. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Positive two and negative six when you combine them gives you the negative four. Zoom! Everybody who's giggling too can join them with the lunch detention if you want. Or you can stop now and get it under control. Alvin, you should be looking at the board or your paper, nowhere else. Zoom, if you need to step up to get a control of yourself, please do it. You're distracting my class. Okay, so Noah, good, thank you. Cameron, what is our next step? Now that we've found our factors, what is our next step? You gotta uh, find it because uh, all you gotta do is step to eight. Group the first two terms. You skipped one, you went to three to five. Oh, substitute those back. Okay, can you substitute? Tell me what it is. What is my new trinomial? Well, it's not a trinomial anymore. It's a polynomial. Oh, uh, you got x squared, right? Yeah. Keep going. <coughs> well, what are our factors, baby? <coughs> Plus two x minus x. Uh, minus four. Good job. Good 
we know these are some number comma zero, right? So that is why we put y, instead of the y, we put zero for y. No, you do. In order to solve, you always have to have everything to one side and your equation should equal zero. Because you're, Cameron, you're actually plugging in zero and we're solving for x. We're solving for x when y is zero, okay? The method that we're doing is we're gonna be factoring. So when you see a problem on your paper that is like this, instead of that, it should equal zero, okay? So when you get your problem, you're actually going to start with steps one through seven, what we just did, the entire part of the factor. And now we're going to tack on a couple more steps so we actually get our solution. Okay? So essentially, step eight is the purple. This is the new stuff, right? Step eight, you need to draw a T-chart so we can solve this. We can find those values. Do it on your paper. Go. Write some notes. This is after you get the final answer? After you get the factoring done, because really, your final binomial. Your final binomial, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this is like step eight. You should be taking notes. Is this an example number one? Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we factored example number one, didn't we? Yeah. We did already steps one through seven. So now we're starting on step eight. So we're going to set everything equal to zero. Okay? Do your T chart. Now, it, what? Yeah, well, you need to divide your two parentheses in half, right? One side you need one parenthesis, the other side you need the other. And it doesn't matter where your three is at. It doesn't matter, okay? All right. Now you need to set each side equal to zero. Set each side equal to zero. Step number nine. Set each side equal to zero. What? What? Well, over here, I'm not really needing it, do I? Because now my next step is to solve for x. So when it's this, I don't really need it. When I have that 3, that's going to be of a different story, right? So let's solve for x on this side. That's really easy. What do we need to do, Trey? To what? Right. Well, here we go again. What we do to one side, we... Oh, that was really weak. Can we do it again? What we do to one side, we... Much better. Okay. Come back. There is right here, guys. Look. We just found one of our solutions. Now, let's come on this side. Okay. Oh, he used that big word, that distribute word. So we've used a lot of stuff, right? we factored, we've used exponent rule, we're going to distribute, so we're going to solve for that now. x. <laughs> yes. Well, not four. How is it going to equal to? Mm. Think about it for a minute. You're right. 20. You should be, eventually, you should be able to just see what these solutions will be, but that's okay. So let's distribute first. When I distribute, what do we get? Yeah. 3x plus 12 equals 0. All right, now you should know how to solve. Now it's going to be 4 equals x. Stop. What? Oh, no, you have to. That's it. Matthew. Negative 12 on both sides first. Yeah, okay. Guys, do I need to go back to class? Hey, okay. So, step one in solving this is to subtract 12 from both sides, right? We're left with 3x is equal to negative 12. How do I get x? Oh, yeah, I like how you said that. So my x is equal to negative 4. Okay, it's, it's really the opposite, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, now, this was step 10, right? Solving for x. Guess what? You got one little more, one step. One more. And it's just the formatting, right? You know how Ms. Kayla to take off that minus 1, right? When you don't have it in the right formatting? Okay. We learned you're going to use those squigglies, right? You can't draw that, just do a squiggle line. You're going to put both of them in there. Those are your solutions, meaning those are these values. So for that quadratic, example number one, these values are negative 4, 0, and 1, 0. That is what we just solved for. Oh. Because what happens one day when the zombie apocalypse comes and the calculator is no longer work? Nobody knows school, but you'll still need quadratic. Really? 